All righty. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the April Assembly. We have a big one today, so buckle up. As most of you have likely already heard, Yarmouth School Committee recently made the decision to have Yarmouth schools return to all-in-person teaching. All right, so here is our schedule for next week. There are two school days for students next week, which is a big change. Monday is a blue day and A through L students will be in person. And then Tuesday is a white day, which is a change with M through Z students in person. And they will have, we will all have Clipper catch up. And then heads up to juniors to add to all of your amazing fun. Uh, most of you will be taking SATs on Tuesday. So check with your advisor about your room assignment, all those details. And then uh, juniors taking the SATs will not attend period five classes, but juniors not taking the SATs are expected in classes on Tuesday. To avoid any COVID risks after April break, the week of April 26th to April 30th will be hybrid. It'll be the exact schedule we've been using all year, except Wednesday will be a non-student day. Then finally, on May 3rd, we will start the new schedule. We will have blue days on Monday and Tuesday and white days on Thursday and Friday. Wednesdays will stay just as they are now with advisor at 11 o'clock, then either white or blue day classes, depending on the week between 11.20 and 2 o'clock. We are excited to get back to closer to normal school, but there are still some details we need to hear about. Now, Mr. Klein and Ms. Bongard are gonna explain some of the more nitty gritty details of the change. Please listen up for this very important information. Good morning, YHS. So let's get right down to business. On May 3rd, we're going back to school. And what that means is we are closing out. We're finishing up with the hybrid programming. So you're gonna have two choices. First, if you are a fully remote student and you would like to continue, or if you would feel like you would like to move to being a fully remote student, we will honor that request. We certainly understand that given the times and circumstances, you may feel like you wanna finish the year as a remote student and you would continue to do so, signing on to all of your classes using obviously the Google Meets and so on and so forth. The other choice is that we would expect you to be here all four days. That means attending school on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays and Fridays, and keep in mind for all students, Wednesday continues to be a remote day. I wanna talk about some of those particulars on the next slide. All right, here's the key piece. Hybrid is gone. There will no longer be a present but remote option. All right, you can only attend a, a class remotely if, as I've just discussed, you have decided to be a fully remote student. We may still face some situations as people continue to be quarantined, or excuse me, vaccinated, and that hasn't finished yet. And if we have a case, as we have had in the past, where there is a quarantine situation and close contacts cannot be in the building. We'll talk more about that later as far as specific details. But if you are, then you would still be allowed to attend your classes online while you're quarantined. Finally, you may have a medical reason. And if you have a doctor's note explaining why you cannot attend your on-site classes, then of course, you still could in that particular situation, attend a class remotely. I have the pleasure of talking about parking this morning and I wanna give a huge shout out. Um, it looks like this slide did not update. So um, listen more than look. Um, huge shout out to a big member, um, series of members from Student Senate and then members from the 10th grade class council, 11th and 12th grade class councils, we all got together in the parking lot on Wednesday afternoon to count spots and to anticipate how we might be able to um, work on parking. Student parking has been um, a squeeze for a long time. One of the few silver linings of the pandemic is that we actually have had plenty of parking for all students. And so that has been one stress that has been relieved. Um, but as we return to all in, even given the fact that we will have some students who are fully remote and don't need parking, when we added up the number of parking spots open to students, we realized that um, we will not have enough parking for every single student who has a license and a car to park. And so what that means is um, the group talked about how to prioritize and how to make a fair enough system. Um, the agreement among all was that we are going to have assigned um, parking spots 
for seniors. Um, we're still working on exactly what it will look like for the juniors. We may also assign for the juniors. Um, that system that we're going to use for seniors and juniors um, will end up having some juniors unable to park on site, and we have to figure out how to do that equitably. But we think we can fit most. What it definitely means for the sophomores is we are way short of having enough for sophomores to park. So I know that's a big shift for sophomores, but we wanted to say it early so that you can start planning. Sophomores will not be allowed to park on site after we are finished with our, our final day of April school. So from May 3rd until uh, May 28th, sophomores are not allowed to park and seniors and juniors mostly will. When the seniors are done on May 28th, there will be a lot of parking opened up. We will talk about that later, but the idea is in June, we should have enough parking for sophomores and juniors to park. So more to come. We're still figuring out the, the broad outlines, um, but that was the decision that we reached um, as a group on Wednesday. So we have talked to a lot of students to ask, what are some things that we can clarify that would be really helpful for you to know? So we have a few FAQ slides that we are hoping um, will be useful. Some things have changed. So one thing, big thing that has changed is how do I, you know, how do you determine if someone is a close contact? And the CDC actually changed their, their guidance for schools a few weeks ago. And so rather than before, a single person in a classroom meant that the whole classroom had to be um, quarantined. Now we have a way to say that if we use seating charts in classes, and if we really stick to them very carefully, then we can actually say by measurement, this student was within six feet for 15 minutes or more, even masked, or this student was not. So if we can get really clear about where students are sitting throughout the classes, then the classroom quarantine procedures will be able to change, and I think to the benefit of everyone. We're just gonna have to make sure that we know what the seating charts are and that we stick with them. In other activities, though, it, you can imagine that sports get really complicated. Who is in contact with whom for six, you know, within six feet for 15 minutes or more? So those are still going to have to be a case by case, working with the CDC and the the clubs, the the teams, their coaches and advisors. So I have been so thrilled to hear from so many juniors and seniors, uh, 16 and above, that they are getting um, vaccinations um, starting this week. So what that means is if you are a student who is fully vaccinated and you end up being one of those people who is in close contact, then you have a chance maybe not to have to quarantine, but it's a little more complicated than just getting your two shots. You have to have, and I'm, I'm going to go with the Pfizer Moderna um, two shots. Of course, Johnson & Johnson is one shot. But if you get your final shot and it's two weeks or more from the date of your close contact, then if you can show proof of your vaccination and the dates, you will not have to quarantine. That is huge happy news for everybody. So we're hoping that you are able to get appointments and you're, uh, if you want to be vaccinated, because this will help us avoid big quarantines. And so some of you may choose to go fully remote or stay fully remote because you're wondering what's it gonna be like to have everyone back in the building or almost everyone back in the building. But you're gonna get your vaccination and you're wondering, can I switch back into on site? Um, if I've initially chosen fully remote, there will be a very limited number of reasons where, uh, for which we will allow you to make that switch. And getting your vaccination is one of them. So if you have chosen fully remote, you get vaccinated, you're feeling good, you want to re-enter as an on-site student, you would have a parent email Mr. Klein or me or guidance and say, we'd like to make this change. And we have a process for considering those requests. This is a follow up on Mr. Klein's point about no present but remote option after May 3rd. And this is really important. This is probably the most common question I've fielded as people have realized that present but remote is no longer going to be a possibility. If you think back to a year and a half ago, before we were in the pandemic, there were days when you needed to stay home. 
There were days when you needed to stay home because you're physically not feeling well. Or maybe you needed to stay home because you needed a reset day, just emotionally. You needed to take a day off. We support both of those. I want you to hear that loud and clear. But we also think if you're feeling physically ill or you're feeling like you're emotionally struggling, stay home and disconnect, okay? Take care of yourself, which does not always mean logging into classes, right? So stay home, do what's right for you, feel better, and rejoin us on site when you're able to. I also want to say that if you're physically ill and you call, get called out sick, what's been happening all year long is Mrs. Hung, our school nurse, has then been following up with your parents to say, what are the symptoms? Just to make sure that we catch things early. If you have symptoms that are in alignment with COVID, you may need to get a COVID, well, you will need to get a COVID test before you come back in. That's actually not a, a change in our practices at all. It's been going on all year. And if you are struggling emotionally, we want to be a safety net for all students. So whether it's your advisor or a social worker, a favorite teacher, a coach, guidance, um, please know that we are here to hear you out and to figure out how we can support you best. So as I like to say, don't worry alone. If you're not feeling well for either reason, reach out and get support. All right, so next up, having to do with safety protocols, we are going to maintain all of our current safety measures. So remember to just keep on wearing your masks, wash your hands as frequently as you can, and stay three feet away from classmates um, in class, but then six feet away at lunch when you're eating or have your mask off for drinking water or something like that. Uh, we are almost through the year, so let's just make sure that COVID does not spread here. Just keep on doing what we've been doing the whole year. So, because we still need to make sure to distance in classrooms, some larger classrooms will be moving to larger spaces, and your teachers will let you know before May 3rd whether your class will be moving. All right, now we do have a new lunch schedule. So with more students in the school, clearly we're gonna need to have two lunches again, like before. So just like before COVID, which lunch you have will depend on your period four class. And if your period four class is in the D wing or the two-story wing, you will have second lunch and your schedule will be exactly like it is now. But if you're fourth period class is in any other place in the building, you will have first lunch. And then the schedules on the slide for you to look at if you want. Also, e-health pass reminder. All right, so let's talk about our next steps quickly here. Um, much of this information, including this presentation, will be sent to parents. And what you'll need to do is over the weekend, talk with folks at home and decide which choice you're going to do. Starting May 3rd, do you want to attend school four days a week or do you want to end the year as a remote student? Okay. Monday morning in advisory, what we're going to ask you to do, there was a survey earlier, but there were no names on it. So what we need to do is figure out exact numbers so we can figure out what the safe distancing is in our classrooms. And teachers need to work on this next Wednesday and Thursday. A lot of work to be done. So in advisory on Monday morning, you're going to do a very quick survey, essentially indicating, are you coming back four days a week or are you going to end as remote? We'll get those numbers. We'll work with you and support you for the rest of the year, no matter what. And then as I just indicated, we're gonna to get to work and make sure we're all set for May 3rd. All right, that was a lot to take in at once, but we're all in this together, we got this. Um, that concludes this, the- Actually, numbers. Margaret, I think there's one more slide. Is there? All right, maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe not. It didn't update earlier, so I wonder if we just had a glitch. Oh, there it is. There it is. Thank you, Margaret. Um, so one, one quick reminder, um, I think it's partly because of the weather, partly because we know we're coming back to all in potentially in a, in a few weeks, but we've noticed that there's been a lot more traffic in the school building after 2.15. So it's just a reminder that students are welcome to be in the building after 2.15 if they are working directly with a teacher or a coach. But 
if you are not working directly with a teacher or a coach, we do ask you to exit the building. Again, just trying to make sure that we are staying as safe and healthy as possible, and that has worked well all year. So let's keep going with that. Again, not in the building after 2.15, unless you're directly with a teacher or a coach. I also wanna give a big shout out to Ms. Wooten and the Senior Class Council for making plans to, <laughs> to um, do Spirit Week this year. It's going to look different, no question about it, but they have been working on this for months. And so right now, Spirit Week starts May 17th, and we are going to have a rousing series of days with activities, and we will be watching those through the advisories every morning. So I just wanna say, although it's going to look different, that the attempts to get us back into these really positive modes with the community events that mean a lot to us is very much appreciated. And then finally, um, going back a little bit to what Loey said, um, this has been a challenging year. It's been a year like I, I hope a year like we never have to go through again in some ways. But I also want to say that we're so impressed with how everyone has stuck with the masking. We're so impressed with people's um, diligence and thinking, OK, if we can follow these guidelines, we can be together. OK, in hybrid, it worked and it did work. We were incredibly successful. Those guidelines are gonna be even more important as we go to all in, but what you showed us all year long is that you can do it and you get it. And so it's a big shift that we're gonna go through on May 3rd, but honestly, I don't have anything but confidence that we can make it work, that we can follow those guidelines and we can um, support each other and we can have a great final four weeks for our seniors and a great final six weeks for our ninth, 10th and 11th graders. So shout out to Yarmouth High School staff and students for getting this far so successfully and we're looking forward to closing out the year in a strong way. All right, now I think that's the end of the assembly. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, be on the lookout for that survey on Monday. Make sure you fill it out and have a great rest of the day and a great weekend.